Discoveries in medicine have saved millions of lives and changed our view of the world. Each discovery has an underlying human interest story related to the complexities, the missteps, the near misses and the ups and downs. Discovery of Hepatitis E is one such fascinating story done in one of the most remote regions of the world. With very hard weather conditions besides primitive health care and investigative facilities. The discovery of Hepatitis E is a story of a strong will to grab the vital opportunity which may come once in a lifetime of those lucky ones and the application of a curious mind, creative thoughts, untiring efforts and a strong belief in oneself to fight the skeptics. The story also focuses on the fact that discoveries do not necessarily require high-tech laboratories or institutions with cutting-edge research facilities but can be accomplished in very primitive situations as well. The story originated from studies done by Professor Muhammad Sultan Khuru while he was investigating the relationship of epidemic jaundice and pregnancy in Kashmir, India. During the period 1971 to 1976, he was practicing as a budding physician in the Department of Medicine, Medical College, Srinagar. Many stalwarts held the pulse and nerves of this institution. However, to carry on pace with evolving trends of medicine, he resigned from the post and joined as a postdoctoral student in gastroenterology at PGI Chandigarh. Here he hardened his clinical skills, learnt medicine as an art to practice and teach and developed interest in research to explore the unknown. Knowledge about viral hepatitis was fast evolving in the 70s. Saul Krugman's Willow Brook transmission studies had identified two forms of viral hepatitis, namely the infectious hepatitis, that is the MS1 hepatitis and the serum hepatitis, also known as the MS2 hepatitis. This led to the discovery of hepatitis A virus by Dr. Feenstone in 1973 and the hepatitis B virus by the Nobel laureate Dr. Blumberg in 1965. There were reports on existence of a post-transfusion non-A, non-B hepatitis, later identified as the hepatitis C virus, in patients multiply transfused during open-heart surgery. Dr. Rizzetto from Italy had identified the Delta antigen in patients with chronic hepatitis B. This was later identified as hepatitis D virus. The turn of hepatitis E virus was in the offering. Several questions remain unanswered about the viral hepatitis in the Indian subcontinent. Massive waterborne epidemics of jaundice affecting hundreds and thousands continue to hit our society. During these epidemics, there was reported a high mortality in pregnant women. Reports of such occurrences in the Indian subcontinent were brushed and ignored as biased data collection by the West. With this background, late Professor D. V. Datta, who is the head of hepatology at PGI Chandigarh, would often call Professor Khuru to the liver laboratory for a cup of strong black coffee following the morning meeting and would ask him in a typical Punjabi style, Sultan, why do pregnant mothers develop jaundice and die? He knew that Professor Khuru did not know the answer and possibly wanted him to find one. With these thoughts of jaundice and pregnancy deeply ingrained in his mind, Professor Khuru returned to Kashmir to practice gastroenterology 
as a consultant in the internal medicine at the Medical College Srinagar. Dr. Khuru was offered and nearly opted to join PGI Chandigarh back as a consultant in gastroenterology. However, a simple phone call on a cool November morning of 1978 changed all what he was to do and led him on a path which he and many others have continued to walk for the last 30 years. He was told that an outbreak of jaundice had hit many villages in and around his hometown Sopor and many pregnant women had died. Dr. Khuru had a lifetime opportunity to answer the question which his mentor Dr. Devi Datta had been posing to him for over two years during his postdoctoral period and he did not want to lose this opportunity. Next morning he drove his ambassador car to the area and was flabbergasted to see a tsunami-like situation. Around 200 villages with a population of over 600,000 along the Ningli Nala were hit by a massive epidemic of jaundice with many deaths among pregnant mothers. People were in panic and the health authorities and government were as usual doing damage control. Professor Khuru took a dangerous decision of his life to live in these villages for the next six months and set up an extensive and exhaustive network of healthcare facilities to help those in need. This time he had not to resign but persuaded authorities for what everybody called a thankless job. Very few physicians were ready to join him and he could only convince two resident doctors. He took the help of over 500 paramedical employees of the health department to manage the show. He quickly went through a crash training course of these paramedics on how to deal with any eventuality, track each and every case of jaundice, take a urine, stool and a blood sample for lab tests and give medical treatment as needed. Each village dispensary was energized to receive patients and he would rush in very harsh winter conditions from one health unit to another to do quick consults. Ward numbers 3 and 3A of the SMHS hospital affiliated to the Medical College Srinagar received those patients who needed inpatient care. A laboratory was set up in six abandoned toilets of the newly built outpatient building of the SMHS hospital and he stored human material that is tools and sera samples in freezers housed in these toilets. Many lab tests were done locally on these samples. He received generous kits from many international organizations to perform advanced tests of the SEVA. Samples were sent to many laboratories in the UK, Europe, Japan and the USA to do cutting-edge tests on the SERA and fecal samples. By six months, the impact of this epidemic had subsided and he had learned a lot on how to deal with the next epidemic. Unfortunately, many more massive epidemics of jaundice hit different regions of Kashmir in 1979, 1980, 1981, 1991 and 1993. The dedicated team continued to face the challenge of these epidemics use control measures, treat those in suffering and reduce panic in community. In April 1979, Professor Khuru took some breathing time to analyze the data collected during the six months of intensive survey protocol 
the epidemic involved an estimated 52,000 cases of icteric hepatitis with over 1,700 deaths. The disease had unique clinical and epidemiological features. The epidemic was waterborne with highly compressed epidemic curve. Following the epidemic, secondary waves of hepatitis did not occur. Clinical profile was characterized by cholestasis in around 20% of the patients. The disease predominantly occurred in young adults. There was increased incidence and severity of the disease in pregnant women. A subset of the patients had distinctive liver histology. All surviving patients had self-limiting disease. The sera lacked serological markers of acute hepatitis A and hepatitis B. Based on these data, Professor Khuru announced to the world community that a new, unique, hitherto unrecognized disease called the epidemic non-A non-B hepatitis had caused this epidemic and also postulated that it was caused by an unknown viral agent distinct from post-transfusion non-A non-B hepatitis. Professor Khuru proposed for many reasons that this new disease should be called the hepatitis E and the agent once discovered should be named as the hepatitis E virus. Dr. Khuru presented these data at the plenary session to the 20th annual meeting of the Indian Society of Gastroenterology, Pune, India on October the 12th, 1979 and it was subsequently widely circulated and published in high-ranking, reputed American and British journals. The data were received with great interest by the international scientific community and a short plenary session presentation delivered by Dr. Khuru on the epidemic non-A non-B hepatitis at the first international conference on viral hepatitis held at New York, USA on March the 30th, 1981 is a testimony to that. However, this report was not without skepticism from some international experts who doubted these observations and called this epidemic as a classical epidemic of hepatitis A. To fight the skeptics, Professor Khuru shipped thousands of sera to many international laboratories only to confirm his findings. The sera were retested by Dr. William Durmer of the Netherlands, Dr. Decker from Abbott Laboratories, Dr. Mayumi from Tokyo, Dr. Omata from Chiba University, Japan, Dr. Miyagi from the Prefectural Institute of Public Health, Japan. Dr. Purcell from NIH Bethesda, Maryland, to name a few. In recognition of this groundbreaking study, the article on epidemic non-A non-B hepatitis was reproduced in the book on history of viral hepatitis. To do further studies on this disease, Professor Khuru set up a collaborative study with Dr. Robert Purcell in April 1981. Clinical samples from Kashmir epidemic 1978 reached Dr. Purcell's laboratory in excellent condition on August 14, 1981. Unfortunately, the transmission studies were delayed due to the shortage of chimpanzees in Dr. Purcell's laboratory at that time. While the team was struggling with this, a large epidemic of jaundice outbreak occurred in a Soviet military camp located in Afghanistan from August to September 1981. 
A team from the Institute of Poliomyelitis, Moscow, led by Dr. Balayan, investigated this epidemic. The investigators were impressed with the fact that this epidemic closely resembled the Kashmir epidemic of 1978. To determine the causative agent of this outbreak, Dr. Balayan himself ingested pooled stool extracts mixed with yogurt from nine infected patients. He developed severe jaundice and found viral particles in his stool samples. However, cloning and sequencing of the virus had to wait for seven long painful years due to the paucity of viral particles in the infectious samples. This was overcome by the simple observation that large quantities of virus were present in the bile samples of infected monkeys and this led to the cloning and sequencing of the virus in 1990. We've come a long way about the Hepatitis E story over the past 30 years since the first description of the Kashmir epidemic of 1978. Hepatitis E has been identified as one of the most important emerging infections worldwide. An estimated one-third of the world population has been infected with Hepatitis E. In India alone, over 2.2 million cases of Hepatitis E are thought to occur annually. Foodborne zoonotic Hepatitis E is recognized as an important clinical problem in industrialized countries and a major threat to the elderly, alcoholics and those with organ transplants. Two vaccines have successfully undergone phase 3 trials and we are ready for the prime time to control this human pathogen. As we proceed to fulfill the challenges imposed by Hepatitis E, a public health problem of global importance shall be eventually conquered.